And we're back. Too close for podcast. You thought we had gone away, but we didn't. Talking about episode 212 today, January 19th, 1982, a fan for Henry. Well, this week, we begin with Henry and Muriel going through their cosmic cow fan mail. And Henry finds another letter from X, which creeps him out. The next day, Sarah brings brings up the mail with another letter from X saying that he must have Henry's cosmic cow puppet because the comics are no longer doing it for him. Or he's not, not getting them getting X off anymore. It's not doing the trick. It needs needs a better fix. When Henry shows up with a police officer named Ron Williams, the police officer tells him not to worry about it. And perhaps he ought to think about buying a gun. Monroe suggests they purchase a kangaroo for security reasons. Ron tells Henry he can't do anything about X until X makes his move. Later, Henry and Muriel come home and find the doors unlocked. Feeling paranoid, he checks out the apartment for intruders and finds that the Cosmic Cow Puppet is missing. Then Muriel finds a note pinned to the mirror saying that X has taken Cosmic Cow and will be back. And that's Act 1. Well, if they'll be back, there's nothing to worry about then, now, is there? That night, Henry can't sleep and tries to wake Muriel by holding the alarm clock over her head and then throwing it into the trash can. And then she finally wakes up and pulls out earplugs. But she's a good she's a good sport. She wakes up happy. Henry tells her that he ought to take the girls and go to a motel because he's worried about X. Notice he said motel. I believe he said motel. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, waiter, and she upgrades that to, we got to get a hotel suite. So the next morning, the girls and Muriel are packed and ready to go. Ron Williams is there. He's going to be staying with Henry, along with Monroe, to try and protect Henry. Monroe has a water gun that looks very much like a real gun. When Ron gets a call, he has to leave the two of them alone, and Monroe, for whatever reason, ends up destroying the phone in the living room, which uh, Henry doesn't understand. I don't understand it either. He, nah. he pulls the cord out of the wall, but they have two other phones. But that's just Monroe being Monroe. Yeah. So that's Act Two. We're in the home stretch now. Now Henry is trying to draw with a sock puppet on his hand, and it's not going so well. No, we can't understand it. It has no mouth. Or a tongue. <laughs> this is more of a roar. Then the phone rings, and Henry answers. He's in the bedroom, so he answers answers the red phone. You know? And he says, hello, Lester? No, he doesn't. It's, anyway, it's Muriel on the phone saying that she's fine, that she's at the hotel in the suite. And, and of course, Henry doesn't like that. But she's fine. So he goes looking for Monroe, who uh, they both, they're both on either side of the kitchen door. And then he swings the door open. Monroe pulls the gun on him, squirts him in the face. Then the doorbell rings. So the two of them get ready to attack. When they open the door and find a little girl named Kathy, who is returning the Cosmic Cow puppet, Kathy tells them that her little brother is sick. 
or her brother is sick. We don't know if it's a little brother or an older brother. So she took Cosmic Cow to help make, to make the, her brother laugh. Henry's, Henry's like, well, Cosmic Cow doesn't work without me. So he goes with her to the hospital. I believe it was a hospital, right? Mm-hmm. With the Cosmic Cow puppet and Monroe in tow. Act three. Act, act four. We cut to the suite and... Uh, no, that didn't happen. If this was an hour-long show... Turn this into a movie. This could be a movie of the week. <laughs> And Kathy abducts both Henry and Monroe. And April's driving the getaway van because uh, she was not in this episode. This was a pretty decent one. This was episode 212, and its production number is 12. So this one's right where it's supposed to be. But last week's episode happens the week after this, and next week's episode happens the week before this. It goes... 13, 12, 11. Very strange. Guest stars, Officer Ron Williams and Kathy with a K. Okay. No last name there. Also known as X. Or Mr. X. Mm-hmm. Was there a reference to Cosmic Cow in this episode? You bet. You bet your bottom, well, <laughs> you bet your bitty. You start it with Cosmic Cow fan mail. And then we had a sock fill-in for Cosmic Cow, which is... We don't get to see that sock again. The Cosmic Sock. The big red sock. Yep. Nope. Henry sweaters. We had two of them. We had oh. the classic Florida Gators. <laughs> and Earlham, which I'm probably not pronouncing right. That's in Iowa, for all those it's of you who want to know. Arts College. Yes. And they have football as well, I noticed. Wow. Which makes sense, because I, I bet most of these are uh, kind of sports-ish college sweaters he wears. Like the Florida Gators had the mascot on the front and whatnot. Is Monroe wearing stripes? You, you bet you. He, 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 multiple stripes. You like stripes. You like Monroe. You'll love this episode. Seriously. Who's notably absent? April? Yep, with no explanation. They could have thrown a bone and said, April's out of town, but no. I'm guessing written without April in mind. We also get a reference to Henry's mother-in-law, once again, without Who <laughs> still doesn't have a name. No name. I have determined she does not get her name until she actually shows up in the show, and that even takes till the third act of that episode. That's coming up fairly soon here. Let me see, just looking back real quick. This episode was written by one Eric Tarloff. And it's the only episode of season two that he has credit for. So he was probably going off the original model minus April. That's my guess. I have no proof of this, but it just kind of makes make sense. sense. Yeah. Not familiar with April. Mm-hmm. But totally familiar with the cow. Yeah, he totally went the Cosmic Cow uh, route. There's many ways you can approach a too close for comfort script, and this guy went the Cosmic Cow route. One-sided phone conversations. We had the sergeant to officer. Oh, you know it. We had him. Betcha. And then we had Muriel to Henry. And no, we can't cut away to Muriel. We can't show you her. But guess what? A few more episodes. That rule gets broken one time and one time only the one-sided phone conversation. And you can argue with me about it. You'll have to wait till the episode and say, does that really count? I won't I won't spoil that for you. Just something to look forward to in the weeks ahead. I'm intrigued. We had uh, five instances. Well, Oh, and there was also a no-sided phone conversation as Monroe pulled the cord out. Remember when phones had cords? Henry pointed five times. And Ron Williams had a lot of finger acting going as well. There's a 
This show is a lot about acting with your fingers and pointing. We had one good Henry Stammer. Z Z Z Zodiac. See, that's why they were scared because they were there was a Zodiac killer in San Francisco in that area at that time, I believe. And this and uh, this officer Ron Williams is just laughing about it as he says, "I haven't seen letters this messed up since the Zodiac killer." You have a gun. <laughs> you ought to think about buying one. Oh yeah, yeah. This was back before uh, toy guns had to have an orange tip on them, so Monroe's squirt gun looks very realistic. And he has no problem pointing it right in Henry's face, not once but twice. He pulled the trigger the second time. Yeah, in the first time. Did he? Yeah. He said, hey. what would you do when he squirts? And I thought it was on safety. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> The intro was the short, classic Monroe in the Chair intro. The intro we all know. Subversive m moment in the program? College students love to get stoned and read Cosmic Cow. We had the music cue of the one note music cue. That happened once that I noticed. I mean, I don't really have this written down, but watching it again, I'd say the bizarre odd happening was him throwing the alarm clock in the in the trash can to wake Muriel up. And he also tried to shine the lamp in her face there yeah. before he started with the alarm Around clock. 205 in the morning. Another uh, kind of semi-bizarre thing was his whole security routine. And when they came back and found the door unlocked and he's whipping around. And that was classic. Looking under. and Boom. Dropped to his knees, looked under the bed real quick, popped, right back, popped right back up, mm -hmm. went in, in the closet. One door of the closet popped out the other yeah. side. And then doesn't notice that the puppet's not there until he reaches for it on its post. And then Muriel just so happens to look up at the window and see that note tape the up mirror. there. Just time. Look at the window. <laughs> it's a mirror. It could, it's a window to another room. Yeah, it's just like earlier you said the note was pinned to the mirror. And how do you pin a note to a mirror? Oh, <laughs> the tack? Yeah, you just stick it right in there. We say goofy things on this show sometimes. Uh, and no disheveled Henry hair. Through all that bouncing around, he kept the hair intact. Maybe a little off, but once again, that's up to you to decide. Your mileage may vary on that. Okay, I'm going to give this a four on a scale of one to five. This one, a little bit better, and strangely enough, a different writer. What does that say? I, I don't know. I like, I like it all. What did we learn this week? Nothing. We relearned something. We learned that Henry still doesn't like guns, as we learned uh, two weeks ago. Now, we learned other things, like... Uh, lock your door. Lock your door. Uh, when you get one letter from, from somebody named X that seems kind of menacing, remember that other letter you got from X that said that their brother was sick? Yeah, start... That you didn't respond Don't to. throw away your fan mail. And never told anyone about Henry. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Poking holes in the uh, in the plot line there. Well, let's not do that. That's just like Monroe pulling the phone out. But they have two other phones. And one of them rings after that. They both ring. I'm assuming the one in the kitchen <laughs> rang as true. Well. That is true. All right. Next week. It's another pretty good one. The episode that happened before this one, but was shown after this one. You can't see my finger acting on a podcast. Next week, Brotherly Hate. Ooh. April. Yes, April. April plans for Henry and her father, Bill Rush, to meet up and hopefully reconcile. Will it happen? I don't know. I think there was an incident with a goldfish that uh, there's some grudges being held, so you'll have to tune in next time for oh. that one. Is April's father the older brother? Is that ever discussed? I guess we'll have to uh, see if we can find that detail. We'll let you know. That one. We'll let you know. You can hear my show on Stitcher. Stitcher is radio on demand. 
Download the free app today. Listen anytime, anywhere. Create custom playlists. Rate and review my show on Stitcher. And over 4 million car dashboards. On demand and on the go. No downloading, no syncing, no wasted memory. Stream your favorite podcasts. Don't have Stitcher? Download it free today at stitcher.com or in the App Store.